All right, ladies and gentlemen, in order to be successful for today's instructions, you need to have your focus and study guide out. Today, there is no vocab quiz. Uh, however, Monday, you do have vocab 1 through 10. Tuesday, you have 11 through 20, and your test is on Wednesday. This week's content is really not that bad. I actually hate testing. I hate doing this stuff. So we're going to try to make it as fun as possible. We'll try. All right, here we go. So today, this week, personality two is really all about a little bit of theories, but mostly it's about the different types of personality tests you can take. So I have examples of personality tests that you can take. I wouldn't be. All right, here we go. So trait theories. Trait theories is what we kind of left off last week. Trait theories is looking at different types of traits that we have. We have Cattell, who came up with 16, yes? And then who's the other one? Atal. Cool. So, ladies and gentlemen, when we're talking about uh, trait theories, where you have to look at a bunch of different components. Okay, so trait situation, all that stuff. Okay. When we are talking about cultural personality, so our your personality right now has been shaped by the fact that you live in America. I don't care if you were born in America or not born in America, the fact you are attending a public school in America has shaped your personality. Can we agree? Okay. Anyone here been to school in another country? There you go. Where? There you go. Is it completely different? Yeah. Are we louder or quieter? Way louder. Way louder. Are we more respectful or less respectful? More. And it's a lot smaller. Ah. See? So, we're way louder. Why are we louder? Because we're Americans. <laughs> and we're, like, the greatest, obviously. But yeah, our culture affects who we are and our personality and how we interact. When we talk about personality, uh, the impact of culture on personality, we have to look at it in four different components. The first one is called individualism versus collectivism. Individualism versus collectivism is how we, and you should be writing this down on your study guide, it is how we make decisions. It is faces how we make decisions. So. I am from, a, I'm an American, but I am very individualistic. You need to know the difference between individualistic versus collectivism. Individualistic means I make plans for myself. You need to write this down. I make plans for myself. So when I was your age, my goal was to get into a, uh, a cheap college, a good college, but for as less money as possible because I knew I was going to be an idiot and be a teacher and make no money. Okay, so... Individualism is focused, am I focused on me and my goals? I am. I'm an individualistic person. I wanted to live my own life. I needed to get the hell away from my parents. I needed to make my own money. I didn't want to be dependent or tied to anyone. Collectivism is when your focus is the betterment of your family. Now, ladies and gentlemen, stereotypically, stereotypically, it's not 100%, your Asian families are collectivists, okay? Not just American Asian, Asian Americans, but like Asian in like China, Japan, they're collectivists. Everything they do is about supporting the family. They go to college in order to make more money to support the family. Everything they do is about raising the station of the family. So, are you a more individualist or are you a collectivist? You're from America, so you're probably individualist. Even like Asian cultures who come to the United States, they have this conflict, and we'll talk about cultural conflicts that cause a lot of tension in their household because their parents may have grown up in Japan. However, they're growing up here in the United States. Their parents are all about collectivism, doing it for the family while they're like, but I want to do things for me. I want to find my own happiness, start my own family, take care of my stuff. So it's this conflict. The second thing is power distance. Power distance is how close or far an individual feels 
how close a person or individual feels to making genuine change in the world. So power distance is how close an individual feels to making an, an, an actual change. So here in the United States, because we're looking at culturally, do we have a high power distance? So you're going to write in the application high means far away. High means far away. Or low, which means very close. Here in the United States, are we a high power distance or a low power distance? Low. We're low. Because if you love Donald Trump, can you support him in nine months? Actually, 10 months, 11 months. Can you support him? Yes, because the election is in 10 months, okay? So, if you hate Donald Trump, can you tell him? Yeah. Yeah, in how many months? Now. Well, you could go on Twitter and tell him. I, I'm sure he doesn't care. But you can vote him out of office. Is that a high power distance or a low power distance? Low. low power distance. So here in the United States, we have a low power distance. We can make genuine change because we're allowed to vote. Okay, if you don't like the Saudi prince and you're in Saudi Arabia, how's that going for you? Not, not good. So an example of a high power distance would be Saudi Arabia. If you don't agree with what the king of Saudi Arabia is doing, do you have any way to change it? No, you don't. Okay, so high power distance means you can change things. Low power distance means you can't. Are you texting your friends to let them know, Olivia? Put it down. Okay, then we have masculine versus feminine cultures, okay? Now, when we talk about masculine, we're talking about loud, and you should be having these types of descriptions. Loud, domineering, controlling, that's masculine descriptions of culture, versus feminine, which would be submissive. respectful and unintrusive. Hmm? So masculine is loud, boisterous, um, they are going to be controlling, they're hands-on. Your feminine is going to be submissive, respectful, and kind of removed. So what would be a culture that we would describe as a masculine culture. Grace Mary, US. the United States is a perfect example of U.S. Mas of, of cultural <coughs> masculinity. Okay, we say whatever the hell we want. We tell the world we'll blow you up if you don't agree with us. Okay, we threaten all the damn time. Okay, um, if you don't like it, uh, you know who cares? We're gonna do what we want. That's a very masculine thing to do. What would be an example of a country that's very feminine? Who is submissive? Norway is a great example. Sweden. They're kind of like the Swiss, for God's sakes. They're like, we won't make a decision about anything. That is very much a very feminine thing. Well, whatever the world wants. That's what Switzerland says. So masculine versus feminine. Then we have uncertainty avoidance. Uncertainty avoidance is when how much, uh, how much is controlled by the government. Do we feel like we're in control or out of control? Okay, so uncertainty avoidance is how much do we feel in control of over our lives. Is it high or low? And that's how we rank them, high or low. So high would be we feel in control and safe. So if you have a high uncertainty avoidance, you feel safe. Like for instance, ladies and gentlemen, in case you haven't heard, which I don't know how you could at this point, China is going through some crazy times right now with the coronavirus. In China right now, are ever, is everyone terrified? Yes, they're literally hiding in their homes and streets are completely barren. School has shut down. Government is still barely functioning, but there's food crises. People are in panicking. Hospitals are overwhelmed. It is a huge deal. Here in the United States, how are we doing? We're doing okay. We're up to nine, I think. We're up to nine cases here in the United States. Nine or I think maybe ten, but manageable. Okay. 
Are we freaking out? Have we canceled classes? Have we locked down any cities? No. So, our uncertainty avoidance, is it high? Do we feel like we're in control or is it low? It's high. We're in high uncertainty avoidance. We feel like we are in control. For instance, I, oh, I told you this because I wanted you to feel better. Um, I told you how stupid my brother is for dating some dude in South Africa. Well, it's drought season down there. So the kid hasn't had water in his house in five days. My brother's been giving me text updates. You know what I don't give a shit about? is some random kid in South Africa who doesn't have water because of droughts that happen naturally in South Africa, by the way. What about that kid? This moron that apparently I have to be involved in. Low or high? Low. Low. He doesn't have water. When my brother was down there, they ran out of water. And he's like, what? Like, there was like four days I couldn't bathe. And I couldn't, like, brush my teeth. We had to use, like, bottled water. And then they reused the water. What? Uh, <laughs> what? That's so gross. Like, he would, like, put it in a cup, and then later he would drink it because, like, times were tough. They had to keep the water. You know us Americans? We're, like, turn it on. Tons of water come out. We then put, have the water running as we're, like, brushing our teeth because we're terrible and wasteful. Believe me, I, I sometimes do. I try to be mindful, but, like, sometimes it on. I try to. I try to. But I'm not going to say I'm perfect. And I brush my teeth and then I spit it down the sink. Yes? They spit it back into a cup so if they need the water later. Could you imagine? At least they have toothpaste. Well, yeah. I mean, they're not. It's not like... <laughs> every country, I think, has toothpaste at this point. But what I'm saying is they have very low control. Yes? Like, these things happen and they just kind of go with it. Like, they... They capture rainwater, and if they get desperate enough, they'll boil it in pots to use it. Like, that's the craziest thing. So crazy. It is. What do you got, Hayden? So it's like how strict the laws are? Yeah. Well, yeah, South Africa, like, Johannesburg has no water for most half the year. And that's why and it's one of the largest cities in the world. So we here in America have a very high uncertainty avoidance, okay? There's a disease that's killed... 400 people in China and is now infecting 25,000 people and here we are still at school hanging out doing our thing we have a high uncertainty avoidance however South Africa low uncertainty avoidance like they get school canceled all the time down there because one day there was a whore a horde of rhinos that just parked in their like play yard and wouldn't let people come in and out <laughs> In South Africa. He had a day of school canceled last semester because the rhinos wouldn't let people come close to the school. Even though they shot, like, guns to try to scare them away, the rhinos wouldn't leave. And rhinos are aggressive. This is the craziest thing. What, Grace Mary? That's not my problem. That's not my problem. He's a moron. Okay, so, ladies and gentlemen, I will tell you, there's like four or five questions on what I just covered on your test on Wednesday. If I had to say it was like one of the harder parts, that would be it. Now we're going to get to the dumb stuff. An interview. How we measure personalities, one way we do it is by interviewing. We ask you questions. It's a method of personality assessment in which a professional asks questions of the client and allows the client to answer. Did you know that's how an interview goes? No. Let's model, let's turn to our neighbor and practice interviews. Ask them a question and please listen to the response. Turn to your neighbor and ask them a question. <laughs> ask them what their plans are for this weekend. Go, do it now. Charles, what are you doing this weekend? Are you going camping? You're working? Where do you work? Where? Oh, hell yeah. I haven't been there yet. I haven't been there. I drive by it every day. Okay. Three, two, one. How did your interview go? Was that life changing? Yes. Was that like the most exciting thing you've ever experienced because you've never asked a question and listened to a response? This is wild, obviously. Well, I learned something. I learned a bunch of mine. Hopefully, you learned something in your interview. Okay. 
One thing that can affect our interviews are things called halo effects. Halo effects is the tendency of the interviewer to allow positive characteristics of a client to influence the assessment of the client's behavior and, sent and statements. Ladies and gentlemen, we have this all the time now in uh, our media. Can we agree? Yes, it's a huge media bias on both sides, both Republicans and Democrats. Let's not fool ourselves. Um, Donald Trump pretty much only does interviews with Fox News. Why? Yeah, they make him look great. They sit there and say only nice things about Donald Trump, and they lay up these massive, like, huge softball questions, and he can hit it out of the park every time, and everyone's just so excited. When Barack Obama was in office, who did he do a lot of his interviews, not all, but a lot of his interviews with? CNN. Why? They made him look great. He was very much supported by the C uh, by CNN, and ever, uh, a lot of the commentators really, really enjoyed him. Now, um, that is a halo effect. If I really liked you, I wouldn't want you to look like an idiot. Can we agree? So I try to make things easier for you. That's called halo effect. Is that always a good thing, or is that a good thing all the time? No, absolutely not. Is that the real world? No, absolutely not. So we see this all the time. Like when you see celebrities go on like Colbert show and all of these late night TV shows and you see them do celebrity interviews, like come on. Seriously. Like no one will call Kylie Jenner out on anything because they want her to show up on their show. So they never call them out. All of these like football players that, you know, they did a bunch of tours after and they were just asking him like stupid softball questions instead of asking him like tough questions. That is a halo effect. We see it all the time. But in while we're doing research, which is the context of what we're doing, is that a good thing or a bad thing? It's a bad thing. Now, for our, our entertainment shows, does it really matter? Is it a good thing or a bad thing in our news? It's a bad thing in our news and it's a bad thing in our research, but like, if people want to be nice to Kylie Jenner, that's fine. Did you see how much she threw for Stormy's birthday? That shit's crazy. I saw that. that was so crazy. Oh my god. Who knows how much she spent? They said she only spent a hundred thousand. She spent way more than a hundred thousand. I thought it was like three hundred thousand. Oh, I saw a hundred thousand girl. I don't know. I saw it and I was like, damn. Hey, if I have her money for her lifestyle, you bet. You would be you would throw a party about her face? It wasn't about it's her face. They walked into her face. The, circus one, the, the circus one was cool, but the oh, last one was a little crazy. Oh my god, why the heck not? Yeah, that'd be epic. What was her most recent one? It's on, I saw it on Twitter like last year, but like bigger and better. And it's crazy. all Stormy's face. No, you saw the one picture on no. the tabloid or something. She's one of those people, just let her have it. I hate Kylie Jenner. I hate the whole clan. At least she's the whole clan. Her kid, like, and not. They made billions of dollars out of nothing. I can respect that. Heck, fine. Right? Fine. Like from a business side, like that's crazy. Of course, these girls can hustle hard, and they do you, girl. She's not even gonna remember. No, she's not. <laughs> projection. So your next type of test is called projective test. Did I skip something? All right, a projective test. Let's, uh, oh, here you go. I should switch the order. That doesn't make much sense. Oh, I'm not because it's going to take effort. And I don't feel like doing it. So let's do projective tests and then we'll go to projection. Is that fair? Okay. So projective tests are personality assessments that present ambiguous visual, visual stimuli to the client and ask the client to respond to whatever comes in mind. Okay? So that you show you a vague picture and then you have to say what's happening. Okay, so let me show you something, and I'll come back to it. Don't yell at me, but that way you can see. If I show you this, tell me what, think about it for a second, what does it look like? Cow. You're in your head, you're in your head, you're in your head. <laughs> okay, so five, come up with an answer. What does this look like? Then turn to your neighbor and tell them what you think it looks like. Go. Turn and talk to your neighbor. Go. Connor, talk to Charles. Three. Two. 
One. Ladies and gentlemen, each of you saw something different. Can we agree? No. We said the same exact You two are weirdos. Okay? A projective test means you get to put whatever you want into a situation. You get to do whatever you think it looks like. If you thought it looked like a moth, you can say moth. If you said it looked like a bear, fine. Someone's told me it looks like a beaver. I don't see a beaver. A bat? Fine. Okay? However, you get to see whatever you see. That's what the projection component is. There's no right or wrong answer, and that's what I would also put down. There is no right or wrong answer. However, their answer will get analyzed. If you saw that picture that I just showed you and saw your mother's face, your therapist would be like, oh, shit. They got some deep-seated issues here, yes? So, there's no right or wrong answers, but it does give insight into what you think. Yes? Okay, so, like, I can put ink block. Ink Not yet. Ink we haven't gotten there yet. Okay. I know it was. We Wait, haven't gotten there yet. Should I put ink block? Oh, it's, like, right there. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So, a projection is a defense mechanism where you put your own thoughts onto other people even though it doesn't belong there, okay? Like, for instance, if someone yells, have you ever said, thanks, Mom, or, like, uh, to someone and you didn't mean to when they were being, like, motherly to you? Yes? Or you did it as a joke and you're like, oh, thanks, Mom? That's projection. Like, you're, like, putting this, casting this side uh, to them. That's a projective test. Okay, the first type of... Major projection test is the Warsaw ink blot test. I would write above it projection test. Just so you know, looking at it later, that it's a projection test. So the Warsaw ink blot test is what I showed you. That was an ink blot. It's a projective test that uses 10 ink blots as ambiguous stimuli. If it's an ink blot, is it really of anything? No, no it's nothing. You're supposed to say what you think it is, and then your therapist will go ahead and analyze your response. So if you look at an ink blot and say, oh, I see my father's disappointment in me, your therapist is like, god damn. <laughs> There's some real hatred between this father and son. I wonder why. <laughs> and kind of go from there. So the first one is called the Rorsash ink blot, okay? And they look like this. So I just showed you this one. Here's another one. So stop in your head. Think about it. What does this look like? Don't say anything. Turn to your neighbor and share what you think it looks like. Go. Talk to Charles. Charles! Oh my God, Charles. Thank you for thinking outside the box. Three! Who sees like bears like clapping? I see bears. I see, like, circus bears dancing. There you go. So, there is no right or wrong answer. So your therapist would write down your response and be like, hey, if you saw dancing bears, then this is what that means. If you saw death from the wife just got murdered by her husband, then that would be like, oh, shit. She thinks her husband's about to kill her. Okay? So, these are other Rorschach inkblot tests, okay? So, they're super famous. You've probably seen them referenced in movies before, yes? Okay, they're super, super famous. Okay, then you have the thematic apperception test. It is also a projective test, and I would acknowledge that, and I would put projective above the thematic apperception test. I like the thematic apperception test better because it's a projective test that uses pictures of people in weird situations. And then you have to say what is happening in these weird situations. What? It is people watching. It's perfectly said, Sydney. It's like when you see people, like for instance, McCray and I are going to parenting classes. So we're, you know I'm already judgy, right? Like, I'm a super judgy person, which is why I don't really let you socialize in my class. I give you such structured socializing because I will listen and then I will judge you for it. We are super judgy of these couples that are raising children. 
like in the same situation we are, and we have seen some real doozies in these classes. And then we see some like amazing like soon to be parents, and we're just like we are inferior. We need to catch up. Oh my god, what are we doing? They can do this. We can't do this. Like we're in two separate categories. This isn't good. So, and then we see some people, and we're like, oh, we got this. If they can do this, we got this. Okay, so it's people watching when you sit there and judge people. These are thematic app perceptions. So think about this picture. What do you think is happening in this picture? So stop and think about it. Don't share. All right. Turn and share. Charles, talk to Margo, please. Kelly, will you talk to Connor, please? Go. I was going to say he looks like he's trying to go, like, fight someone. Five. Four. Three. Two. Kate, what do you think? What are they doing? She's about to say. I'm scared. Ew. Ew. Gross. Lindsay, what do you got? What do you think? She's like in love with him, but he is in love with a bunch of women. A bunch of women. So he's just gross. All right. What do you think, Corinne? There you go. Aren't you glad those eyebrows aren't in fashion anymore for her? Yeah. Those were very trendy when I was in high school. Thank God that's done. All right, here we go. Think about it individually and then come up with an answer. <laughs> Think about what is happening in this picture and come up with something on your own. I'm going to give you a couple more seconds. Stop it. Will you just let him come up with an answer? Three. Two, one, turn and talk. What is happening in this picture? Yeah, Connor, you're talking to Kelly. He definitely just disappointed her. She's like, I turned her back on him and he's like contemplating her. What? Three, two, one, Hayden, what do you think, man? Uh, the old lady's taking a mugshot. Oh, my God. <laughs> the kid's, like, waiting to take a mugshot. Oh, oh, my <laughs> God. You think they're, like, crazy killers or something. What do you think, Emily? What did you come up with? Um, you said how, um, maybe, like, her husband would be, like, his dad passed away and they were in the morning. Yeah, that's exactly what I thought you would <laughs> <laughs> There's no right answer, but like I heard people talking about, oh, they're gonna like he's gonna kill her or some shit. Like, what the hell is wrong with you people? All right, here we go. Same thing. I'm gonna give you a second to look at it, and then you tell me what's going on. This one I think is the most interesting one. Here we go. Oh, okay. You're thinking oh on your own. I think oh my god. <laughs> I think they're all thinking the same thing. <laughs> Turn and share what you think is happening. Go. Yeah. Either, either she just died or like she just walked down him with another one. No, bro. No. I know exactly what you're saying. Three. Two. One. Here we go. What do you think? What do you think, Caroline? Um, so she just walked in on her husband cheating on her, and then she killed him. Yeah! Get it, girl. <laughs> the, the dark shadow is her guilt. Damn. That was good. That was so good. What do we think, Camden? Um, I'm thinking this morning after just trying to get out of there. <laughs> <laughs> she really regrets some previous decision. <laughs> All right, here we go. So, the thematic app perception test. Oh, in your application for thematic app perception, I would say vague pictures with humans 
in like scenarios. So thematic apperception are like things that you could see that kind of happen, yes? Okay, like they're like actual scenarios that you could kind of envision to a degree. The ink blot test is a bunch of shapes of nothing, and that's what I would put in your application box, or shapes of nothing. Okay, so now both of these tests are subjective, and subjective means that they're only valid to you and your perception. Like, everybody sees them differently, okay? I doubt any of you had as deep as Caroline's, because I had some layers, man. I had some real layers to it. Um, and so, with projective tests, different experiences create different outcomes, okay? So, if you're not a jealous person, you wouldn't have seen jealousy in that. If you're full of rage, you would have seen a murder scene, okay? Some people are like, oh, she just lost her husband. Her husband just died, succumbed to cancer or some shit. And I was like, I would never have come up with that. But you would come up with that if you've seen someone die of cancer. Does that make sense? So subjective means it varies from person to person, which makes it very hard to score. You need to write that down. The more subjective the test, the harder it is to score. So are these used often or infrequently? infrequently because they're very hard to score and it takes a long time to go through and do it and you have to be certified okay so subjective they're not used often what Ugh. So, subjective tests um, are not used very commonly. I'm ready for this day to be over. It's been a long one. And then I have to go to work, and then I have a three-day weekend, and I'm, like, so busy. Hi, I am not the official weather person, but I will look. <laughs> we didn't need to live that. So 8 p.m. By 11 p.m. tonight, it's 100% chance. Yeah. So when your girl is driving home, that's when it will be the most dangerous. Thunder and lightning. It's supposed to be super windy starting at 3 p.m. It's already pretty windy out there. Yeah. So it's both. Yeah. All right, here we go. Okay. So your next one are behavioral measures. Flip it over Okay, so direct observation is on the top of the next page. We'll come back and get the other stuff, but we'll just keep going. So when we're talking about behavioral measures, we're talking about actually observing behaviors. Okay, so if I decided I wanted... Uh, this happened probably all the time in elementary school. You just don't remember. When people used to walk, come into your class and just watch your class, they're typically counting behaviors. Uh, in elementary school, if you get diagnosed with ADHD... Okay, if you are, I don't, you don't raise your hand or anything, like that's not what I'm looking for. But if you were diagnosed with ADHD when you were in elementary school, they had someone do a direct observation on you, which means whether it was another teacher, whether it was a guidance counselor or some sort of psych, uh, psych professional, would go into your classroom and for like two hours watch you and count how many times you got off track. Yeah, and that's part of the diagnosis of ADHD is that we're supposed to track and do direct observation, which means someone is watching you in your normal behavior and is writing down what you're doing. Like, for instance, uh, in my first year of teaching, I had a mentor named Corey, and he, in my first year of teaching, was absolutely instrumental, and he did direct observations on me all the time. Like, he would draw out my classroom, and he would track how many kids I spoke to that day. Which, if you notice, I hope you do, I try speaking to every single one of you every day. Like, I actively try. And if I haven't spoken to you in a day, I try to go out of my way the next day to speak to you or you, that you hear your name in my classroom. Like, I do that on purpose. I hope that you also see that I try alternating between boys and girls. Now, in this class, we have a lot more girls than we do guys, so, like, I can't call on Luke 10,000 times or 
Jalen 10,000 times because there's not that many of them. But, like, I try to alternate between boys and girls and not allowing the same people to uh, talk the whole time. That is because of a... It's not that many. I have five guys. It is. So, in my next class, I have like 10 boys in that class. Okay. So, direct observation means I had someone in there counting how many times I spoke to each person and who I spoke to and how many times I spoke to them. So, after I talked to them, like Corey would tell me, hey, you spoke to Jalissa like 15 times, but you never spoke to Hayden. Well, it's obviously Jalissa. Have you met Jalissa? She's hilarious. Of course I talked to Jalissa. Okay. With that being said, that's a direct observation, a type of behavior. Okay. Then we can do rating scales, which is another way we do behavioral analysis. That is an assessment which a numerical value is assigned to a specific uh, number that is listed on a scale. So on a scale of 1 to 5, how much are you paying attention? Well, at the beginning of the class, I would give Olivia 1. You know, because she was texting through my instruction, you know. Right now, I would give Camden a three, because my girl is listening. She's just working ahead, which I'm not mad about. Right? I like, I would say, I took a book today. I'm both. I am mad about it, because I know you're working on my stuff, yeah. but like, I wouldn't say it's a five. You're not fully in tune, but you're getting my stuff done, so I'm not hating. Emerson's been doing this for like six months at this point. <laughs> I don't give a shit. As long as my stuff gets done and I know it's getting done, I'm fine. However, I wouldn't say you're the high, most highly engaged in my class right now either, which is why you're getting a three instead of a five, and why your girl, Olivia, is only getting a one, because I can't give her a zero. <laughs> no. So rating scales are when we tie it, and then we have frequency counts. And frequency counts is how often you do something. Okay, so... Every single one of your teachers, including me, have certain things that we do on a super regular basis. Like, for instance, one of my things, which I will say I haven't been that bad this year, is true not true. I used to say it all the damn time. I've really cleaned it up because someone pointed it out to me. True and I'm not like, true. True not true. You said it I don't do it all the time. You do it all the time. You do it all the time. Like, literally it's all the time. I, I Thank you. I See, growth. 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 No, like... Thank you, girl. I like you even more. I find myself saying it. Yeah. Like, um, two years ago, my thing was, yes. And I said it. <laughs> I still say it, but I don't say it as much. You say true, not true more than you say. Do you remember what it was for us? No. I don't remember. Damn. At the beginning of the year, both of those things were better. It's gotten better as the years. It has gotten better because I've been doing little frequency counts for myself and being like, okay, Samantha, like. Dear Lord. But don't, every single person in this room falls into a face. Can we agree? Yes. That you fall into like, something? I have an idiot, and I love Zach, but he just says the same shit every single day in my class. And drives, he sits in that seat, which is why I'm pointing at you, Lindsay. All right. <laughs> okay, so personality inventories. Now, personality inventories are paper and, pe paper and pencil or computerized tests. That consists of statements that require specific standardized response. Marga, how much time do I have? Because you've already decided you were done. Well, one, it's already written down. But Bam. we have one minute left. So, like, the SAT? Wait. No, oh, it's a personality oh, inventory. Oh, it's a paper test. Like, it's a Cosmo quiz. A what? A Cosmo <laughs> quiz. You've never taken a Cosmopolitan quiz? Mm -hmm. Have you ever taken a quiz from... How have you not? BuzzFeed. It's so weird. I love BuzzFeed. I don't like their quizzes. Every once in a while. Like, I had to find out what type of White Claw I was. <laughs> white Claw. What are you? I'm a manga. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. You're not a white girl. It doesn't mean anything to you, Connor. But my husband also took the quiz, and he's also a manga. <laughs> No, oh, don't worry. We have mango in the house. Not that your girl's been able to have a sip of it, but McCray has had indulged. Goodbye. We'll talk about personalities when you get back. See ya. Have a great weekend. Be careful. Be safe.